Hey, Alba. Hey, Katie. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome to my, um, this is the outdoor plants indoor edition in this I room. Like this. I like the way you've got a few zones that you, you do your practice in, you know, you've got a lot of things. That's yeah, cool. I like to do the varied, um, you know, acoustic business when I can. Nice. I don't have, always have the opportunity to play in so many different rooms. This is, this is very true. I'm officially in my music room, which has like all kinds of mad things. Oh, I'm Hopper 20 this week, something completely different. One week to learn this. I mean, it's, it's enthusiastic. I think definitely as a student, you should spend probably more than one week on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did you find it? Yeah, well, I've gone back and done a few poppers in the past few years, and I can't remember, but I think I did this one pretty recently, like maybe two years ago, we learned it. So it kind of was in my fingers the way, you know, a concerto that you've done a few years ago, is it? Sure, so yeah. I had a bit of an easy time of it. I mean, as easy as you can say for something this challenging <laughs> and diverse. Um, I'm very happy that you did. It's, you know, it's going to be yin and yang for us as we do this project over the years. So yeah, yeah, totally. And it really shows up, I think, like different technical strengths and weaknesses of my play when I'm going through this. I, I mean, don't, I've been, you have I've no been, when you're playing. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just, we're just perfect in every way. Perfect little wow. snowflakes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but like, I actually, I'm probably like a bit of a masochist, but I love double stops. I yeah. practice them almost every day and I think everyone should personally, but um, so this one is like up my, up my alley because of all the double stop action. Interesting. Um, I mean, yeah. that's uh, definitely something that would be very helpful would be practicing double stops every day. Mm -hmm. I tend to practice whatever is coming up very soon. Um, I know. So this is why this project is great, you know, it's a thing to, to focus on. So happy days. I think you probably do the work of about five people, Alva. So, you know, well, you and me both, my friend. You and me both. <laughs> so you're going to pick like kind of, I wanted to talk about maybe a few spots and then like overall, like if you're going to pick three technical aspects of this study that you think are worth mentioning or focusing on, what would they be? Okay. So it's really interesting because it looks like they're really just your kind of three sections of it. And mm -hmm. you know, that legato at the very beginning not to even though that's the easiest part thinking about your link notes and your shifts your weight balance um mm -hmm. and also the fact that the bow string crossing has to be earlier than we think for it to sound legato yeah you know, first thing um octaves you know that whole end of the the first page uh, all the way actually pretty much your octaves and you know how do we make sure that the top note is actually following it's really you know because we're listening to the bottom course mostly yeah. that's going to be in tune but will our actual top finger keep following that's my yeah. thing and um, and then towards the end there was one hilarious spot that i just didn't practice enough you know that bit um... yeah. as soon as you get to th that area and actually still practicing the octaves which i did not do and that shows in my uh <laughs> my delivery oh, yeah. but you know, kind of funny things like even that. Uh, I'm not sure I would go back to one and thumb there. Yeah. And, and you know, I did what's written in this because I thought maybe I should give it a go. But I would actually do one, three, one, three, back to one, three, and then go to one and thumb. Interesting. Yeah. You know, because it just it didn't work. I didn't it. So, yeah. yeah. I like the one thumb when we get up, but I would definitely go. I think that's easier than the one, three, one, and then this odd jump back. Yeah, that's just, such, I'm, that's a really good suggestion because I was like, man, this fingering does not work for me. Um, no, nor nor me, but it obviously depends, as you say, on people's hand shape and all that. that yeah, kind of, it just wasn't. I guess for me. the tricky thing about that is the um, fact that you're. If you do the printed fingering, your first finger basically has to move by a half step, doesn't it? Sure. So that's kind of an awkward, awkward job. Yeah. I was thinking this passage here is such good prep for anyone who's learnt or has the opportunity to never, you know, is learning for the first time Dvorak Concerto, that bit in the first movement, end of the development. The... Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to play the hard bit. But also all of that, you know, yeah, that, that's perfect 
training for that scale at the very start, you know? Um, yeah. It's it's great, actually. Had I played this before, it would have been very helpful before I played Florida. <laughs> well, I think it's a great, I, I think stuff like this, it's good to make those connections, right? Because if you're learning, let's say Dvorak for the first time, yeah. and you know in your past you've done this study, yeah. um, you kind of have this built-in confidence of knowing what it's about and being able to like go back in your memory banks to re sure. rely on that. Yeah, not always to be when you're learning new rep, but that's the new technical aspect you're learning. You know, to yeah. be able to go, I recognize this, super, happy days. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like, I like that. And obviously, yeah, like all the octave stuff, God, it's great for just numerous amounts of everything in yeah, the yeah. cello rep. I mean, I, I have to say for me, I, I totally agree with all your points on this. I think one thing that's really great about this study compared to maybe the first one uh, is that it's much more virtuosic in the sense like a piece, a romantic concerto or a romantic show piece might be. There's a lot of variety of, um, you know, articulation. I mean, it's mostly slurred, isn't it? But, you know, amounts of bow you have to use, whereas Papa one is really just focusing on one stroke, isn't it? Sure. Um, yeah. So, and you've got all these dynamics, which I have to say, I found that's another little hidden thing. You do so many layers of work on this, but I found often when I was doing the first line, I always want to lead to that note. I want that to be the height of the phrase, but it goes all the way to the end. You really have to overcompensate for the string crossing at the sure. end. It's a great way of developing that. Yeah, and I mean, we're always trying to combat that sound of every, you know, mm -hmm. going from the A string to the D string. So again, you know, you're breaking this down. There's so many bits, the bow string crossing, the loose shifts, the link notes, back to the string crossings and always having the same type of sound. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing, I mean, I wanted to maybe talk about a few bars. You've mentioned that one with the um, ascending fifths kind of progression thing that's yeah. with the octaves. That's just insane. We'll have to put a little screenshot of these passages up on the screen with us. But um, the bar that's at the top of page two, I think that's such a great moment. I mean, I off the top of my head, I can't think of any cello repertoire where you do an octave shift of more than like two octaves distance. It's literally like like the biggest motion you can make. Almost. Yeah. Well, it's really fascinating. When I was studying, a lot of teachers of mine would make me do two octave shift jumps. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. So you know the way people have that. That's like an octave shifting exercise that people do. Mm -hmm. So then they would get you to do the same. have to practice it for a while but what that does is it really frees you up in a way that you just have to move yeah i found that was the same i actually practiced because at the beginning i was like hmm interesting you know how do we get up there obviously preparation of thumb yeah but then for me it was really that knowing how far how far that third finger wanted to go how did you practice it yeah, I think those are great um, suggestions. I've, um, I think for me too, I mean, it's, it's a strange interval, isn't it? It's a minor ninth plus an octave. So I don't know my math. Yes. But so I, I would actually sing it first to really get that pitch in my ear. And like you, I'd probably just do the top octave. And then as I'm doing that, think about where my thumb because I think the thumb, as you've said, really has to lead that shift. And sure. once I Great idea. feel comfortable with the motion, I'm not sure how useful it is to do. Sometimes I would break down the lower thumb when I'm practicing octaves, but I'm not sure since it starts on an open string, if that's the best. But I think it's a great example of it's all fine and well to practice technique in the vacuum of something that's an exercise. But to have to do it in the context of, okay, mezzo forte, fortissimo on the scariest bit. Like, it really, really challenges you in a fantastic way that I think often happens in repertoire. You know, how many times have, have we as uh, musicians and cellists 
encountered something and we're like, oh yeah, I can do that. That's fine. And then, you know, in the heat of performance, you realize it's, it's a bit more complex because of the fluidity of the phrase or whatever. Yeah. And also, you know, what's interesting about it is, so getting there is the first thing and then getting there with a balanced hand is really, you know, in order for you to actually have an equally balanced hand, you need to have the weight right over the right plates. So, you know, you can, you can make the shift, but whether it sounds good afterwards. So you've got the balance of the left hand and then the balance of the bow hand, you know, and the right balance of weight on that too. There's just so many different things going on. You don't have too yeah. much pressure in the left hand or else you, you'll have, you know, a clamped hand, you know, the claw will come out <laughs> by the time that you get to the next bar. Like, it's, you know, that's a lot of optics. And if you're not practicing yeah. optics, you know yeah and that why you're talking about that right like we have to find places to relax the hand in all of this yes i mean with all the fortissimo it's sort of like if you're really playing with the brute force of like rostropovich and the last moon of shostakovich concert you're not going to survive probably unless you've got yeah so you know, like, super I mean, thumb. definitely for me first four lines you have to be super relaxed because stuff is coming you know yeah <laughs> and then like places like you know anywhere like that that's just like a little bit easier than usual you're yeah. like okay let's let's get this back same kind of thing you have to do while you're playing a concerto you know absolutely it's such do. good prep for all of that isn't it it really is yeah um so it'll be interesting to see how successful we are with those things yeah. Last little thing I was thinking maybe of talking about, which is, you know, you've you've probably, I would imagine since the very beginning of your musical education had such a strong concept of like chord structure and all of that because of your background in piano. Um, but for me, when I learned these the first time, I thought it was really a revelation. I like would nerd out theory wise on this stuff. So, I mean, all of the, this, this whole study really focuses a lot on the diminished chord, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah. Sevenths. So, it's such a great way if you're not used to thinking um, in terms of, you know, tonal harmonic structure of getting that in your head, because I think the symmetry of a diminished triad sometimes is difficult for people to get a, their ear around. So there's just tons of that everywhere. Yeah, I yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah. That's why it's fun to play too. I know. Who doesn't yeah. love a bit of diminished chord intrigue? Like... I mean, it's just so exciting all down here in the cello power corner. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Look at what entertains us. Right. Absolutely. Anything else you want to say or should we have a go? I think let's just have a go and see what happens, you know? Cool. Um, can we do it? Yeah. Do you want to go first today? Sure. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. 
I know. Yay! Very cool. Arrived alive. Arrived alive. <laughs> that was super. My God, like super controlled and like you were like, I'm the boss of this. <laughs> I love it. Do you know, I'm always impressed with like just how much musical intention you put in everything you play. It's just, it's so refreshing. Well, this really you. could be a caprice the way you play it, you know? You could play oh. this in a concert. Well, thank you. You're, you're very, very kind. It's, uh, I mean, obviously, I do love playing things completely with passion, but often, you know, that helps me get over hard things, you know, where uh, one might have a sneaky area. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, often intention will get you a long way, so. Um, it's a very important lesson for us all to learn, though, right? I mean, absolutely. It, it's totally part of what this study is about because you have to find a way to cope with it and make it musical and all, all the things, right? It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Wow. It's great. And I'm sure uh, many people have experienced this, but this just the difference of playing to you, even via the internet, um, yeah. like yeah. really makes me feel like it's a performance more than <laughs> playing yeah. it through to myself. Same time. I mean, it, it does just feel different, doesn't it? You know, yeah. um, in a bizarre kind of way, it does feel like your, your octaves are so nicely balanced. You know, the whole yeah. time, whenever you're playing them, they're just really. I mean, you can see you practice your double stops every day. <laughs> well, thank you. That means a lot from you because I know you don't beat around the bush, Alva. Alva tells it like it is. You <laughs> can is, count on her for that. That is the truth. I mean, some people like it, some people don't. But here we are. I'm I'm in the camp of liking. Yeah, because let it out, like you know, we'll all get better when the truth is out there in the open. You know, it's good. Nice so day. I guess I'll see you next week for the next one. We will yes. announce what that is shortly. Oh, very exciting! Um, of course. Yeah. Um, looking to see you, my dear, as always. Yes, looking forward to ah, next too. week. Next time. Oh. Woo -hoo. That was cool. I liked it. See you later. Bye.